is the new A80J 2022 going to be worth it from the 2021 A80J? So I think that's probably going to depend on the size. So last year with the A80J, depending on if you got one of those Evo panels, it was a panel lottery unless you were going for the 77 inch A80J, then it was going to be an Evo panel. But if you're under 77 inches, then you're probably in the panel lottery for the A80J. So the A80Ks this year, they should have the Evo panel. And I think mostly it should be confirmed that it's the Evo panel. Correct me if I'm wrong. So that is going to be something to look forward to. And then they said they improved upon the XR processor, though it is still the XR processor. It's just uh, some software improvements to help it work better. So that's something I guess could be an advantage, but in terms of picture quality, I, I don't know how much of a big jump it'll be from the A80J to the A80K. Like realistically, visually, if they're side by side, I doubt you notice a huge difference. I don't see the point of Evo unless you're getting brightness gains. Yeah, so the thing about the Evos last year on the LG C1 is that the ones that were Evo, they still didn't get the gains because you didn't have it unlocked. It wasn't unlocked. Um, and the A80J, they didn't have that restriction. So if that had the Evo panel, that was going to give you more performance and more efficiency than the older panels. So, but this year it's unlocked and you have to worry about that. And uh, Classy is here to join us. And I do got this new sweet CES uh, layout. So. You guys will be able to see that. Mr. Walker was saying, I don't see the point of Evo unless you're getting brightness gains. If you were getting a C1, even with the software restriction, the WBE panel was better to get uh, mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, but on the Sony side, at least, um, they didn't software restrict it like the C1 was. A couple things about the LG 2022 lineup. I'm going to go over real quick. The 8K Z2 OLED has Wi-Fi 6. The G2 OLED has the EVO panel, the heat sink or heat dissipation, whatever you want to call it, uh, 120 hertz, Wi-Fi 6, and then the C2 OLED has the EVO panel, 120 hertz, no Wi-Fi 6, and then the B2 OLED has 120 hertz, two HDMI 2.1 ports, and then the A2 is a 60 hertz panel. So, and also I want to note that the 42 and 40. 8 inch C2 models are OLED EVO, but they're not going to be the same brightness levels as the 55 inch C2 and up. What's your takeaway with the G2? I, I really think that I was surprised to see that it was the heatsink was in the G2 and they didn't just announce it as its own model. But other than that, I did expect the heatsink in some capacity. Personally, I think that the heatsink that they're using is going to be thin and cheap and just like they've done a lot to reduce the. Uh, amount of material needed to build the TV. So I think all of that's going to help with cost cutting. And I think it's going to be similarly priced to what the G1 was at launch. I think the C2 is going to be quite a bit cheaper than the C1 at launch. I'm thinking like $24.99 for the 55 inch. I oh, see so you're killing me G2? with the 55s because I never pay attention to 55. Okay. Like, I'm just I got to think 55. 65 that's like the, the first uh, entry level, like, TV, right? Um, and that's the first so, one everybody yeah. pays attention to. But yeah, for me, I, I like I'm trying to think of 65, 65 inch. Um, I think the G1 was like three grand at launch, 65 inch. I think it's gonna G2 okay. is gonna be the same three grand or maybe 32 at most, 35. The C2, so the C1 65 inch came out at oh god, what was it, 23, 22, 20. Somewhere like 22, 24, something like that. Um, and then it ended up dropping to 17. Um, I could see the C2 launching at like 21, 65 inch. My thought process with this was they have kind of the luxury panel this year almost, right? The one that everybody's going to want. So they have the ability to price it higher and get no real like blowback from it. Because oh, what they will. really say, I know they'll get blow that. It's, it's saying, Sony, like, like Sony has a Sony they tax. Have this, it doesn't matter though. what they offer. Sony has that Sony tax. Sure. LG doesn't. LG is they actually kind of hurting for money. Um, right. You know, I think LG worries about moving in volume over higher 
uh, margins with a lower volume. Thirty five hundred is my guess for a sixty five inch on the G two. I think that's the most it would be. I think it's going to be like thirty two, um, and possibly three. And then if you go if up three, from there, the same price. So like if we, yeah, we go up to the eighty threes. You know, the eighty three C one came out at six. I think the eighty three G two is going to come out at six. I think the C two is just going to take over where the C one is at five. Yeah. All right, for sixty five on the C two, what was it last year on the C one? Uh, launch. Like I, said, I think yeah. it was twenty four. I think, it may have okay. been twenty two. Right. Um, I think I think, like I, said, I think the C two will be the same or a little less. I think it'll be the same because they're basically selling the C two already as the G one, and mm-hmm. they could have. I know they could have cut G one more than they did. So right. It's interesting. We'll see. We'll see. And then, like, I I don't think we really need to talk about the B two and the A two. The B two is like one of those models that's like not sold until Black Friday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, the B two is basically going to be the C one with panel lottery yeah. just to clear out what there is left. Yeah. And well, and two HDMI two point one and a lower processor and yeah. yeah. But it's good to see they changed that. All right, um, let's talk about Sony. So, Sony OLEDs for 2022, the A95K, which is the cutie OLED, uh, 55 and 65 inches, and it's rumored to be in the Q4 of 2022. So, we're talking maybe like December. Um, and so, we talked a little bit about cutie OLED. I do think this is going to be really cool, but something we don't really need to worry about. Most people don't have to worry about for a while on uh, purchasing because it's probably not worth it um, first year. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't think the prices are going to be as high as what's going around. I It'll think be, because yeah. it's coming out at the end of the year, gives them time to drop the price. I think uh, they're willing to not have huge margins so that they can actually sell them. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm thinking five grand for the 55 and then either six or seven for the 65. But yeah. even at that, I wouldn't buy one. I have like I would like to have eyes on and see it just to see what it looks like. But I would not personally buy one, even if I was rich. Um, I'm not going to pay that much money for the old MediaTek chipset. Um, and it, like I said, it's the first year. It's going to have bugs, problems. Um, I'm just going to wait and see what they are. Yeah. Is it confirmed to have the old MediaTek chipset? Because I know like the newer Hard TVs confirmed, are no, out first but all of them are, are going to have the, the two HDMI 2.1 ports, yeah. the one being the eARC. So it very much so looks exactly the same. And it's... Uh, yeah, I think you know if the QD OLED could get down to five thousand, maybe even if it could get down to four thousand for a fifty-five inch. Now we're talking, maybe for some people, um, but even then, it is a bit much to be paying over when you can get a fifty-five inch, mm-hmm. you know, for fifteen hundred or something. So, for you know, later on in the year. So I just think that that's a, that's a hard ask for a lot of people, uh, but for people who really have the money to do it and they just want to try out the new technology. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, uh, 2021 Sony did really good and on the OLEDs, carried over the LCDs. 2022, it's the opposite. They're, they seem to be doing really good on the LCDs, carrying over the OLEDs. Yep. And so I get this question so much this year. Um, people are asking, hey, if I bought an A80J recently, should I take it back? Or, hey, if I bought an A80J this year, did I make a mistake? No, you didn't. Uh, The difference between the A80K and the A80J is probably going to be very, very, very minimal at best. And the difference is probably just going to be that all of them are guaranteed to have an Evo panel. And yours might even have an Evo panel because that's just how it was. It was a panel Mm -hmm. lottery. If you have a 77-inch, you're guaranteed to have the Evo panel. So no worries there. Uh, But the A80K is the new A80J. And there seems to be not any huge differences. Yeah. And um, maybe they took away the semi-matte screen coating on the 5565. Don't know yet, right. but we don't, maybe. We don't know. Maybe they fixed the image retention. I doubt it. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. And then the A90K, uh, <laughs> I keep hearing it's not going to have a heat sink, but then I also heard it is going to have a heat sink. So not sure what the deal is with that, but no, it, it is only 42 and 48. It doesn't. 
right? Yeah, no, no heat sink on the A90K. Okay. Yeah, see, um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just keep hearing mixed stuff on that. Yeah, that's, I mean, people also thought the A90K replaced the A90J, which it didn't. Right, it doesn't. It's, and it's the A9S. Right, A90J is being sold as a premium flagship TV for 2022, which is why you never saw it go on sale on Black Friday. So everybody is wondering, hey, why is this not on sale? It all makes sense now, you know? It all really just kind of makes sense. That That's why they didn't drop the A90J.